Hi everyone, welcome to another financial analysis video with myself, Moe Damin, and my colleague, uh, Ted Wainman. Uh, so today we're going to be looking at uh, a company involved in sustainability, uh, Greencoat UK Wind. But before we go into that, uh, very quick note, this show is all about raising the financial literacy of all of our viewers. So whether you are involved as whether you're a sales professional, whether you're involved, interested in investing, or whether in your career to move up that career ladder, your financial knowledge has to become a lot better. This is the show for you, right? So pay note and attention to what we share here, because uh, we're not going to be looking at the quarterly annual statements. We're gonna, sorry, quarterly statements. We're looking at the annual statements. But from what you learn from us, you're going to be able to read those quarterly statements really well. And you're going to get a very good story and picture about the company that you're interested in just by looking at the financial statement and being able to analyze that. So uh, let's go on to Greencoat UK uh, wins. So just a little bit about the company. So in, uh, essentially they're involved and they invest in UK wind farms. So they're exclusive to the UK industry right now from what we've read about them. Um, and uh, you can see some information about their targets and returns to investors but they're very much a part of the UK's sustainability play. So in COP26 summit, the UK um, uh, made a legal duty uh, to become net zero in terms of greenhouse emissions by 2050. So green coats are very much a part of that story. Uh, so stick around. We're going to go into the finances around the company uh, and also about the shares. Before we go into the shares, this company was a request from one of our viewers. So about 98% of the companies that we analyze uh, come from you, the viewers. So leave a note in the comment section and let us know about a company you're interested in as well and leave some context behind that, some description. So a couple of people, Gary Smith and the other person, uh, XDC, et cetera, um, you know, they made a request. Here are your videos. So um, we're going to go into the share price in a moment, just some context behind that. So if you'd invested five, well, if you invested when they first um, floated in 2013, you'd be sitting on an increase of around 56%. Five years ago, you'd be up 27%. And from one year ago, you'd be up 18%. So this company is growing in terms of its share price. We're going to be looking at the finances moment. And at the end of the video, we're also going to look at that share price just so you get some context behind that. Um, so without further ado, uh, Ted, Please uh, share with our viewers what we have found about the finances on this company. Yeah, good to see you, Moe. Thank you very much indeed. So, um, yes, welcome to everybody. Um, I hope you are all very well. Greencoat UK Wind. Here we go. So here is their accounts. Now, um, put a caveat on this one, Moe. Uh, this is a slightly different company to the kind of the normal companies that we look at. And I'm going to show you. Um, how you could your, or how it jumps out at us. Um, this is an investment company uh, and therefore is effectively like an investment trust. OK, so let's look at the accounts. Now, usually what happens is that I kind of I scroll down through all the kind of the annual report um, very, very quickly in order to get into um, the kind of the key numbers, which we've done just now. What I am going to do is we're going to go back um, and, and look at some parts of the um, the uh, the uh, the actual annual report, some some of the um, uh, information contained in that. Um, so in effect, this is a, so these guys are, are investing in wind farms. OK, and uh, in fact, I'm going to go back and show you this because I think it's important that we understand what we're looking at. So when we look through the accounts and, and uh, there's a kind of, you know, who's doing it and, uh, you know, there, there's our investment manager. So I'm well done to those two guys. Um, but here's here's the investment portfolio. OK, so these guys own wind farms uh, and if we take an example at the top they own and assure wind farm and wind farm uh, has vestas turbines is operated by statcraft the ppa i don't know what ppa means um uh, is also statcraft it you know gives out megawatts and they own a hundred percent of it so effectively that makes and assure a private company now this is a very important concept bickerfen they own 80 percent so i'm guessing that edf who's the operator, um, owns the other 20%. So you'll see lots of these companies, they own 100%. If they own 100%, they're not listed. They are owned by this company here. And this company is, of course, listed. 
Now, this is important because what we're going to see is when we look at the accounts, uh, what we're not going to see is, for example, the cash of Bishop's Thought, the cash of Bin Mountain, the cash of Bickerfen, the cash of Andershaw, all amalgamated together. No, what we're going to see is these guys, an investment, and then them receiving the kind of the income from that investment. So if you want to see, for example, and I was doing this just earlier because that's the kind of person I am, Moeed, um, Earl's Hall Farm, you'll see down the bottom, you can go on to Company's House and you can look up Earl's Hall Farm uh, wind uh, uh, company. You can look it up on Company's House. You can find their annual reports. You can do the analysis. You know, we've been doing it with lots of different companies. So hopefully you're getting a little bit better. And there's a, an online workshop, which I'll plug as well, um, uh, which will help you analyze financials. So you can analyze their accounts, but it's a, it's a private company. There's no, there's no uh, third party um, uh, 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 share price for it. Now, this is important because these guys are investment trusts. So this is a really good way of if you want to invest in wind farms and the wind farms themselves are private companies that makes them very illiquid very difficult to sell out so this is an investment trust uh, it's closed ended uh, which means that there's a limited number of shares and if you don't want to be invested in them anymore you can just sell your shares like that tomorrow which makes it a very liquid vehicle for investing in illiquid uh, investments now some of you may have heard of, of an investor called Neil Woodford. If you haven't heard of him, look him up, look him up on Google. It'll tell you all about him. Neil Woodford ran a fund, but it was an open ended fund and he was investing in illiquid investments, not wind farms, but other types of companies. And when his investors phoned him up and said, I want my money back, he said, I can't give you the money back because they're invested in companies and I can't sell the companies because they're illiquid. So if you are going to invest in illiquid underlying assets such as wind farms, do not invest through an open-ended investment company. You want to go through a closed-end invested company like a unit trust, or sorry, like an investment trust, which is like uh, 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 these guys, okay? So Green Coat is a good vehicle for this. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's, it's the right vehicle for it, but the, 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 the structure is right. So let's look at the, um, the actual numbers that are coming through. Here's the return on investment. So, you know, the return, they're getting a return of, 423 uh we're in thousands of pounds you'll notice so it's about 423 million pounds um they've got the cost of running this is be the, the cost of running their investment management team 26 million um which you know seems quite a lot i'm sure that there's a, a you know the fund managers are, are taking a, a you know fair old chunk um of that but that leaves them with an operating profit um uh, and you can see you know quite a nice little operating profit uh, an earnings per share 18p up from six uh, pounds 55p so some of that's going to be paid out as a dividend and some of it will be reinvested okay so looking you know so we can see the return on investment some pretty significant returns coming up here some nice big returns and a lot of that will be driven by things like you know government subsidies into kind of wind farm energy etc 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 so if you think that that's a good play then this could well be the vehicle for you Okay. Now, it's not telling us any more than that. It's just saying that they're making a big return uh, and there's a, you know, a, a, you know, a, a, a reasonable cost uh, to generating that return. So it doesn't come for free, for example, you know, the, the cost of the investment managers um, uh, and uh, any infrastructure they've got around them, what's known as the total expense ratio in the, um, in the business. Consolidated financial statements. So, you know, here's their, here's their um, balance sheet. So really the balance sheet is the investments okay now you'll notice that the investments are at fair value okay so what they're trying to do is to kind of assess what those investments are worth but that's a guess because we don't know what they're worth because they're not listed they're private companies okay but that is basically the value of all that list of wind farms that i was showing you earlier they've got a little bit of current assets and a little bit of current liabilities but those are you know basically immaterial and then what you'll also notice down here is a big leverage play okay so um about a quarter a quarter of this investment is funded through debt and the other three quarters in, is invested through equity. So this is this company, they take your money, they take some borrowings, they put it together, they make the investment. And um, you know, through this concept of leverage, it's a bit like house prices. You know, if you borrow, if you buy a house on debt and the house price goes up in value, you make a lot of money, you make a big return. Problem is if it goes down in value, you lose a lot of money. So you want to be quite careful with leverage and a quarter. <coughs> does not appear unreasonable. It's something that um, investment trusts aren't able to do. So it's another benefit 
of these kind of these investment trusts is that first of all um, they provide you with a liquid way of getting in or out of underlying illiquid assets so commercial property you know again very good way of, of you know investing in commercial property rather than through an open-ended investment uh, uh, open-ended um, investment companies which you may remember actually had to close uh, they had to just shut down um, uh, to investors uh, back in the, um, uh, the financial crisis and, and in the pandemic because people wanted to get their money out and the only way to give them the money back would have been to sell the underlying properties. Um, so quite a lot of debt, uh, so a little bit of debt sitting there um, uh, and um, uh, <coughs> and then the rest is equity. We can see the um, the equity in here. We notice that the share premium account, so you know these guys, you know they are that they're, they're investing in more wind farms. Um, uh, and, you know, basically what they're doing is, um, uh, uh, you know, raising money uh, to continue that investment. Um, so, you know, they, they're getting back to the shareholders. They're saying, give us more money. The shareholders are saying, yep, here you go. Here's some more money for you. Uh, and then they are investing it in, um, in, 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 in more of those kind of uh, those, those assets. Um, there we can see the dividends that are being paid out. So these are the dividends, 138. Um, so, you know, reasonable uh, uh, uh you know, a reasonable return, um, which is pretty good. So pretty consistent dividend pairs. And that's part of their, you know, that's part of their attraction and part of the um, uh, the deal, uh, I guess. Um, net cash flows from operating activity. So they, they, they've got positive cash flow. There's the acquisition. So that's going to basically buying wind farms, for, for want of a, a, a better phrase. And then how are they funding it? Well, they're issuing more shares. Um, and there is a little bit of, um, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you know, here's the debt. So you'll notice that they actually repaid uh, so the debt refinancing, but they kind of repaid more than they borrowed. Um, and in the previous year, they actually ended up raising more um, uh, than they than they repaid. Uh, and there's the dividends that they're paying out. OK, so, um, you know, it's a dividend payer. Um, it's a, it's a leverage play. Um, they're raising money. They're continuing to raise money to invest in more um, wind farms, you know, either as a part investor or as the sole shareholder. Uh, they'll be using some of their kind of experience. Um, so they'll probably, you know, they'll have a team who are able to kind of troubleshoot for wind, wind farms uh, to kind of, you know, improve the operation and share um, knowledge rather than competing against each other. They're kind of, they're collaborating uh, and, and there'll be benefits um, sitting uh, within that. So there's the account. So very important that we, that we look at this in a, in a, in a slightly different um, uh, in a slightly different way. And, and if we think about this kind of this balance sheet back here, so this balance sheet, here, here's the, um, the group's balance sheet. So if you buy this company, you're buying the net assets of uh, just over three billion um, pounds. So that's this kind of this, this, this equity, this bottom line, just let me just uh, highlight it. So you're basically buying, and, and that's what's known in, in the kind of the trade as the NAV or the, the net asset value. Um, so that's the assets net of the liabilities. And when we uh, look at um, investment trusts, we talk about whether the company is trading at a premium or a discount to the NAV. Um, so very rarely does a does a um, does an investment trust trade at exactly the same price as the underlying assets. What you find is that sometimes it's trading a little bit higher at a premium or a little bit lower, uh, and and that premium. Uh, is, is what we've been calling goodwill for other companies, uh, but we don't call it goodwill in, in the investment trust world. So when we look at the share price of these guys, and we'll do that now, we'll pick it up. So the share price, uh, we can see the, uh, the market cap is uh, 3.7 billion. So 3.7 billion says that they are trading at a premium. Now, there's a couple of reasons they may be that they're trading at this premium. One of it may be that we just think, wow, this is a really good investment, really good opportunity. It's a buy, buy, buy. Um, the other option may be that actually the underlying assets aren't fully valued. So maybe they're undervalued in the accounts and therefore actually the real value of those assets is understated okay we talk about fair value but you know the accountants have got to come up with a reasonable assessment if the company is not traded in the market you don't know what it's worth you only know what it's worth when you actually go to the market and say buy my company okay so they're illisted com company so Ill illiquid companies unlisted and therefore very difficult to value mm -hmm. so when we look at this um this market cap it's it's a small premium it's about a 20 percent premium it looks you know looks typically pretty high but then they are unlisted companies the pe ratio 
um, of 8.7, so it's about nine times earnings. Looks pretty good to me. Um, you know, I'll definitely take a, a price to earnings um, ratio. And even the dividend yield that, you know, it's down here at 5%. They talk about kind of a target of 6%. You know, e you know any way you look at that, you know, that's got to be a, a, you know, a pretty reasonable, um, uh, you know, a pretty desirable and pretty reasonable yield. Um, what happens in the future? We can see, you know, looking at the, um, the, the you know, the, the share price. So, you know, that, that's pandemic related. Um, so, you know, you know, basically kind of just chugging along and, 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 and a one way bet pandemic related uh, bounces back. And then kind of you, we just see a bit of a decline going on. And I'm getting I don't I can't remember the exact meeting of, of COP, whatever it was, 26 in Glasgow. But you kind of get the impression, especially from the comments we've had, that this is all about oh gosh you know the uk they've got to go energy efficient they've got to invest in wind farms these guys are you know are good at it um you know this is this is the place to be um so i'm thinking that you know this this looks i mean it looks quite toppy um but then on the other hand it looks you know kind of the trading range i'm not necessarily saying it's going to go all the way up here um, you know, but it, it may kind of, you know, you could, I don't know, you could do a sort of a something that looks a bit like that, for example. But, um, you yeah, know, it looks to me like, you know, it's a it's a reasonable, it's a reasonable business. Um, it doesn't look expensive. Um, I, I'm not saying it's necessarily cheap. And I think that this is definitely not a, you know, you're not going to get rich overnight. But this is, I would I would put this as a long term play. This looks like a long term play. It doesn't look overpriced. A long term play on the uh, on the kind of this move to you know uh, uh, energy you know uh, whatever we've got a carbon neutral by twenty fifty or whatever it is blah 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 um, you know and and you know and, and I guess you know it, it it but it is dependent on the on the government's energy strategy. So if the government then says actually you know what we're getting nuclear. You know, suddenly these guys could find that actually they're less relevant um, uh, than they than they were. So you know, you, you're you're definitely making a political play um, uh, on this um, uh, on this company. So there you go. That's my kind of tuppence worth on Greek. I'm not sure we really provided a huge amount of kind of insight uh, from the account because it's it's really just a you know it's a company that just collects the you know the dividends in from you know the uh, the wind farms that it's operating. Um, you know it's collecting in you know over 400 million uh, quid, um, and it cost it 26 million quids, which means a few of the directors are, are doing very nicely. Thank you very much. Um, uh, and, and that's and that's your business. And if you want to be, you know, if you want to be in, in, in wind farms, I'm sure there are other investment vehicles out there. But, you know, this is a, a, a pretty well known one. Um, it's pretty high profile. I've had a few people um, ask about it. And I think that it looks, you know, a not not unreasonable a part of your long term uh, portfolio. Bowie. Let's put it like that. Yeah, so, sounds fair. And, uh, you know, we've helped our viewers read the read and understand the financial statements of investment trusts which is great that's the whole purpose of this show so love to hear thoughts from anyone who are experts in this area uh, and if you leave some comments do please do so and uh, be polite about it of course we all like to learn this is a community so uh, again like share subscribe particularly subscribe especially if you're someone that's made a request for a video if you're a subscriber you will get a notification the moment that video has been uh, published. So uh, until the next video, thank you, Ted. Thank you, everyone. We'll see you on the next video. Good to see you, Mary. Catch you later. So I hope you enjoyed that video and found it useful and informative. Now, if you want to know more about uh, what I do, then you can visit Talk Financials and find out about the training workshops uh, and the clients uh, that I work with. And the QR code uh, is on your screen right now. If you are interested in being able to do this yourself, to do some uh, financial analysis, there's a couple of resources. There is an online workshop. Uh, it's available on my website, or you can click on the QR code and it'll stay, take you straight through uh, to this online workshop uh, where you can learn to read and understand and interpret financial information yourself. Alternatively, there is a book available at all good bookstops, particularly a very big online one and the QR code once again will take you through to the opportunity to buy the book uh, and there is also a Kindle edition. Um, otherwise that's everything from me please 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 don't forget to like share and subscribe 
uh, to the channel, the more subscribers uh, uh, makes it uh, uh, means that you're going to get um, notification um, about uh, new videos coming up uh, and also the opportunity to you know ask questions and do recommend any videos uh, or sorry any companies that you'd like me uh, to analyze for you. Um, I think we've got a couple of uh, suggested next videos coming up. Uh, so please do uh, take the opportunity, have a look at the other videos uh, and don't forget to like, share and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you on the next video.